Bing, City Council, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, JEA, Duval County Public Schools, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue, Jacksonville Transportation Authority, and more. We've been preparing behind the scenes along with Beaches and Baldwin's mayors to bring you the latest update and to help you get prepared. At the last report, Ian was located off the western coast of the state and is predicted to move northeast into our region mid to late week. Currently, the biggest threat to our area is excessive rainfall, moderate winds, and tornadoes likely beginning late Wednesday, with the biggest impact happening Thursday. As we know, with a storm, storm this far out, these scenarios can change for the better or for the worse. But now is the time to prepare. There's no reason to panic. It's just time to get prepared. Make sure you have your supply kit together, that you know your flood and evacuation zones. Also, with the threat of tornadoes, now is the time to review your safety plan with your family. In addition, tonight and tomorrow, while our weather is nice, is when you want to check around your home and secure loose furniture, clean gutters, and yard waste, and ensure that everything is safe and secure. For those that rely on prescription medications, if you are almost out and we're planning to refill Thursday or Friday, Governor DeSantis has an emergency declaration that will allow you to refill your medicine sooner, sooner than normal. If this is something that applies to you, I encourage you to call your pharmacy today or first thing in the morning. Here at the Emergency Operations Center and throughout Jacksonville, our teams are continuing to closely track Hurricane Ian. As of 5 p.m., three parts of Duval County are under a tropical storm and storm surge watch at this time the Trout River, downtown Jacksonville, and the Beaches communities. These watches may expand depending on what happens with the storm within the next 12 to 24 hours. I have instructed our key city agencies and part departments to be prepared in case the situation changes. At this time, we are, don't have any plans at this moment to close city offices or departments, and you'll hear from our Duval County Public Schools today. I believe they're in the same position we are at this moment. Jacksonville Fire and Rescue, Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, JEA, and the Public Works Department have crews standing by in the event of any power outages or other conditions created by wind or rain. Leadership from each agency is here to answer questions if you have them. The state of Florida is currently under an emergency declaration for all 67 counties. However, there is no local emergency declaration at this time. That could change within the next 12 to 48 hours. I know many of you are wondering about evacuations and shelters. We are currently not ordering evacuations or opening shelters, but that could change as the storm moves closer. Please keep watching your local news for future briefings like this one and for regular updates. I just mentioned all city offices will be open for now. Before I turn the podium over, I encourage all citizens to stay informed and monitor updates from the National Weather Service about this storm. As I said earlier, make one last check of your supply kit, review your emergency plans with your family, in short, be Jacks ready. I'm proud of the people of this city. We've been through a number of storms over the years and you've proven time and time and time again that you're resilient, you're compassionate, you're generous, and you help your neighbors. Thank you for being amazing people. With that, I'd like to invite my colleague and CEO, CEO of JEA, Jay Stowe, to the podium, and Dr. Diana Green will follow him from Duval County Public Schools. Thank you, Mary Curry. Uh, we, we are uh, preparing for uh, the storm as it comes in. Um, we have uh, encouraged you, as the mayor just did, to prepare yourself and uh, get, get ready for uh, what might, may come. Um, we have uh, contractors and crews uh, on standby, uh, over 2,000 employees ready to respond, and uh, mutual aid crews coming in from across the country from Texas, New England, Alabama, and contractors on standby as well. We prepare for this annually, and over the last uh, three or four days, we have uh, ramped up the Emergency Operations Center, coordinating with the city uh, to be sure that we're able to uh, keep the power on as long as we can and to support it whenever there is a problem. Um, we are prepared as best that we can be uh, and uh, ready to respond to your needs. Uh, our offices will also be open. Our lobby will be open and call center will be open uh, for anything that you might need in the meantime. With that, thank you. Tonight we will see how the storm progress and make a decision by tomorrow noon as to what we will do for the remainder of the week. However, tomorrow will be a normal school day. 
I do want to remind families that this Wednesday is already a scheduled early release. Again, we will not make a final decision until tomorrow. However, one thing we are considering is releasing students 30 to 45 minutes earlier than each school's normal early release time. I want to share that now so that families can begin to make contingency plans for school changes as early as Wednesday. But again, we will announce our final decision by noon tomorrow and school will be as normal tomorrow. Thank you. With that, we'll take questions. Sorry, just a really quick question. What will have to change in the next 12 to 48 hours for the emergency operations center to be, I guess, activated or for an emergency here in the city? Just more information. I mean, you know, right now there's no event on us at this moment in time. Uh, there will be not, it w there will not be an event tomorrow, but by tomorrow it could be the same. It could get better or it could get worse, and when we have that information, we'll make those decisions. We will probably be announcing decisions by tomorrow, just like Duval County Public Schools. I can't tell you that it'll be by noon, but it'll probably be tomorrow. What, a lot of people always ask, what about the bridges, when, who makes the decision, the city bridges, the interstate bridges, uh, what's the order of closing and when and why? It's based on wind speed, but I'll let the expert answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I'm an expert, but so normally we, uh, we man all the bridges. Uh, we pre-deploy our resources, obviously, to provide safe commute for all the people on the roads. And normally it's about 40 miles an hour. Now, the high bank trucks and stuff are a little bit different. We obviously discourage them from coming across the bridges because they are uh, a wind hazard. Um, but we have wind meters on all the bridges, and we'll make sure that nobody crosses them when they're not safe. Um, of course, we've seen what Hurricane Irma did to Jacksonville a couple of years ago. Is the city prepared for, you know, this system to come through? And are you guys, you know, getting ready for it just in general? Yeah, so we really prepare year-round for this. Um, we've been through a number of these. Uh, actively, as we've been monitoring the storm, our public works uh, is doing what they always do. They've just stepped it up, which is cleaning ditches and preparing uh, areas around the city. Uh, my budgets have reflected, recent budgets have reflected resiliency and preparation for this type of an event, but uh, it's mother nature, so uh, people need to be prepared and know that their city is, is, is ready to be there if and when needed. Mayor, on that same line about Hurricane Irma, that took a lot of people by surprise, the way this storm is coming in as well, particularly with the river, the St. John's, all of the flooding that occurred. Now we've had so much construction or, or is going along the St. John's right now particularly downtown, and you, I know you're building up some of the bulkheads, but some of them have come down as well. What are you expecting to happen down there? And what about the Orlick? It's docked down there now too. Is that a concern? John, I'll let you, Public Works, please take that question. <laughs> uh, Does a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, certainly, as, as Mayor Curry mentioned, um, the, the budgets Mayor Curry has put together has really enhanced our efforts to, to maintain the facilities we have. Uh, we've uh, gone through and uh, made some major improvements to our outfall systems to make sure that they're maintained uh, more regularly, cleaned, and um, free from any sort of uh, restrictions. Um, Bulkheads, every time we go in and replace a bulkhead, uh, we do it at new standards uh, to create more, um, more resilient uh, facilities uh, to protect. Um, I'm not sure about the Orlick. I haven't been engaged in that, but um, certainly uh, there'll be discussion with that group as well. But you still have Nut Park. It's still destroyed um, over a Memorial Park. They've just started rebuilding that, so that's going to be a problem if the storm comes that way, correct? Well, it's certainly um, the elevation of the, um, the bulkheads or something we work on as we, as we improve them. And um, as those get improved, certainly right now, until they're completed, uh, there, there are a, uh, some issue there. But um, we'll address that as it comes, and we'll address anything that comes our way. I just want to ask about sandbags real quick. We've seen a couple of counties right around here that have opened up sandbag filling stations. Is that something that Public Works or the city's going to be doing? So Todd Smith, Chief Merchant Preparedness. Uh, sandbags uh, in other counties are because they have a different uh, stormwater management system. And in Jacksonville, we have a very comprehensive system. And sandbags, if not used the right way, can cause damage. And so in Jacksonville, we don't um, issue sandbags. 
Uh, we reference people to go to their local hardware store and they can find those. Most counties are only giving out about seven or eight. Uh, you can't carry that many in a car. So uh, seven or eight are not going to call or fix a lot of the flooding problems for folks. So in Jacksonville, because of those reasons, we don't use sandbags. Regarding the or Orlick, uh, we were spoke with them earlier. They are uh, activated their severe weather plan and they're working with the Coast Guard, so they're ready. Question for Superintendent Green. As far as student uh, activities are, are concerned, like after school activities, football games, things of, of that nature, are you guys planning to cancel that first before anything pertains to school? How does that typically work with you guys' school district? By noon tomorrow, whatever decision we make, we will uh, give information about after school care, after school activities, whether it's athletics, clubs, all of that information will be stated tomorrow. Thank you very much. We'll probably see you tomorrow.